Hi, this is Steve DeMossi, and welcome to Uncharted DIY. For today's project, we're going to cover DIY double walled cold frames with insect screens and automatic openers. They also have tough polycarbonate tops that protect, insulate, and they look great. As the nights get cooler and winter begins to remind us that it's on its way, it's time to think about extending the growing season for your garden. Cold frames are a tried and true method of doing that, and they've been around a long time. So, what makes these different from most cold frames? I'm glad you asked. These have double walls for better insulation. They have built-in insect screens, and they have automatic openers that open the lids and close them in response to the temperatures inside the frames. Normally, you can have automatic openers or you can have insect screens, but you can't have both. And this is because the automatic openers have arms that need room to expand and the screens interfere with that. Now, those of you with a do-it-yourself spirit can have the best of both worlds with this fairly easy and rewarding project. My cold frame structures are built on raised beds that are four feet by four feet. Since this cold frame design will work with almost any dimensions, I won't go too far into the specifics of building the frame structure itself. I'll describe and show mine, but there are many ways to build the frame structure and many variations of the beds that they sit on. The important takeaway of this video is how to make a screened pocket so the automatic opener can operate properly and still have all the advantages of a screened enclosure. The automatic openers are a huge benefit, providing crucial ventilation to keep the plants from overheating and then closing to retain the stored heat. We have over 300 days of sunshine here, so even on cold days, the temperatures in the frames can easily climb to levels that would cook the plants. Trying to vent the frames manually would be very difficult and would require constant vigilance to avoid dramatic swings in temperature that can harm your plants or stunt their growth. These openers work with no electricity and vary the amount of ventilation in response to temperature fluctuations inside the frame. So when the clouds temporarily obscure the sun and the temperatures dip, these will automatically lower the lids to keep the heat more consistent inside the cold frame. Most of the cold frames you see on YouTube are based on propping up the lid to allow ventilation during the day, but this exposes those young tender plants to the critters that would love to munch on them. With this design, the lid opens separately to allow for air circulation and ventilation, and the screening keeps the critters out. The whole frame assembly is hinged so it's easy to access the plants, and the frames can be pivoted back to allow pollinators in to do their work. When you can't keep an eye on things, the frames can be closed up to keep the cabbage moths, rabbits, squirrels, deer, and other critters out, while still providing ventilation and temperature regulation automatically. When the plants are fruiting, the screen keeps hungry birds out too. It wouldn't be so bad if these creatures only ate a fruit or two, but they usually take a peck or a bite out of every one of them. In the summer, the lids can stay pivoted back and out of the way, allowing for taller plants or even removed altogether with only a few screws. We leave ours on so we can pivot them forward part way and prop them up so even the tall plants are protected from torrential rain or even the freak early snowstorm. We recently used ours like a protective tent when we had an early heavy snow in the first week of September. We went from a sunny 97 degrees in the afternoon to 30 degrees with wet heavy snow that same night. We were able to put clear plastic sheeting over the frames to keep the snow off and we put incandescent lights inside the frames to keep them warm. The temperature stayed above 44 degrees even while everything was freezing and frosting over outside. The plants, even the sensitive tomatoes, looked great a couple days later when we uncovered them. They were still thriving and vital. For our frame structures, I used 2x2 two two furring strip board lumber rather than pressure treated wood since with the exception of the lid, the whole frame is protected from the elements by the plastic sheeting. The upper lid of the frames could be made from redwood or pressure treated wood, but I chose to still use the furring strips to keep the weight and the cost down. 
Keeping the weight down makes them easier to handle, especially for my better half, since she does pretty much all of the actual gardening. And it allows the use of inexpensive automatic openers, since heavy duty ones jump up dramatically in price. To deal with the weather, I put a couple coats of polyurethane on the wooden lid frame to prevent water damage over time. I designed my lids to tilt at an 8 degree angle toward the south to allow more sun to reach the plants inside. This also makes sure that the rain and snow run off without weighing down the lid and stressing the automatic opener. The double wall sides are made from 3.5 mil plastic sheeting wrapped around the outside and the inside of the frame, creating a one and a half inch air gap for much better insulation than a single layer could do. This inexpensive sheeting provides pretty nice durability for the side panels while still letting in lots of light. The top panel is 0.236, often listed as quarter inch, double wall polycarbonate sheeting. This material is lightweight, and transmits almost as much light as glass. The hollow rib chambers in between the layers scatter the light rays, creating a diffuse light that's perfect for plants. The best part is it's nearly indestructible, super strong withstanding impacts, so rain, snow, and hail won't harm it. Because I was building two frames at once, I got a four by eight sheet from Home Depot for around $80. But if I had to do it over again, I think I would get two by four foot smaller pre-cut panels to make them a whole lot easier to transport because getting a sheet that size home, even in my SUV, was really difficult. These smaller panels can easily be attached together and seamed with clear seaming tape or adding a wood strip at the seam for weatherproofing. The polycarbonate may sound expensive, but it's really reasonable for the top lids that take the brunt of the weather but making the whole frames out of polycarbonate would quickly become expensive. To attach the plastic sheeting to the sides of the frame, I used a corded electric staple gun since that's what I happened to have. The electric was faster since I was building two of these at once and had a lot of staples to drive, but a less expensive manual gun would work quite well too. If I was buying a new staple gun, I would get one of the rechargeable cordless ones since sometimes dealing with the extension cord is a bit of a pain. The plastic wasn't thick enough to not just tear away from the staples when I pulled it tight, so I added an edge of thick seaming tape. I used seaming tape that I had left over from a vapor barrier project, but it was 4 inches wide, so I had to cut it in half to 2 inches. I used this vapor barrier tape along the main seams, and then I used Gorilla Crystal Clear 2 inch tape in the corners. But if I was doing this all over again and didn't already have the leftover tape, I would have used the Gorilla Tape for the whole project. This strong tape works incredibly well and it's waterproof and airtight. It's important to be able to make the plastic tight so the wind can't grab it and tear it, making it much more durable overall and it looks much nicer too. I started by reinforcing the top and bottom edges of the plastic sheeting with the tape. I stapled the bottom edge to the bottom of the frame then stretch the plastic over the top rail, attaching the remaining tape reinforced edge over the first edge, making a tight loop. I then wrap that seam where the two ends attach to the frame with another piece of seaming tape so the tape is taking the stress of the tension rather than the staples. I did each of the four walls separately and then used the Gorilla Tape to seal the corners where the walls meet. With the walls done, it was time to make the pocket for the opening mechanism. This automatic opener pocket is what really differentiates these frames from other plans that you may see. The frame of the pocket is made from half inch by three quarter inch pine molding. The shape of it minimizes the space it takes up inside the cold frame. I have a free diagram on the unchartedDIY.com website with the specific measurements to fit the opener that I use, along with an Amazon link to the opener itself. The link is also in the description below. I did a lot of research before choosing the openers that I bought, and they've performed perfectly, so I can highly recommend these particular ones. I used a pneumatic brad nailer and glue to build my pocket frames, but if you don't have an air compressor, you could also drill pilot holes for screws or try small nails. I've also provided links for an electric brad nailer. 
The assembled pocket mounts on the inside of the front wall. It's important that the top of the pocket is on the same plane as, and parallel to, the top edge of the walls. Attaching it directly to the front rails of the frame would make the pocket taller than necessary, and it would protrude into the plantable area. So I made a mount for it from more of the 2x2 furring strip material. Your mounting solution will probably be different depending on the structure of the frame you're mounting the pocket to. Since the pocket must be parallel with the top rails, I used a long piece of wood across the top to determine the angle for mounting the pocket. I used a twist tie to temporarily hold the pocket to that long piece of wood so I could attach the lower cross brace and make the pocket sit at the proper angle. I waited to attach this lower cross brace until the pocket was actually in place where it needed to be to make sure that the angle was correct. Once that brace was in place, I removed the whole pocket assembly and attached the plate for the opener inside the upper front edge of the pocket. With the pocket frame and its mount assembled, I wrapped it in the same screening material that I selected for the vented top opening under the cold frame lids. I used a brand called Better View Screen because it's nearly transparent and it transmits the most light of the various screens I researched. The last thing I want to do is obscure all the sunlight goodness our plants need. I once again used staples to attach the screen. Some staples didn't seat all the way against the wood, so I used a pair of pliers to cinch them tight, though it probably wouldn't have been an issue had I just left them alone. The finished wrap pocket was then attached back into the main frame. At this point, I decided to add a couple of braces to the main frame to add structural rigidity since the chain stays that support the frame while it's pivoted back might bend and flex the side rails. I would have added these internally to the frame sides before enclosing them in plastic had I realized I needed them, but I didn't think of it before putting the plastic on, so I attached them to the outside of the plastic but inside the frame as shown. This is where you have an advantage watching me make the mistake so that you can go straight for the successful solution. To cut the polycarbonate panels for the lids, I left the protective wrapping on it so it wouldn't get scratched up. I used a plexiglass cutter to cut it, but if you don't have one of those, a sharp utility knife and a straight edge will work using a few light passes with the blade. It's pretty easy to cut. Once cut, I removed the protective wrap and sealed the open ends using the Gorilla Crystal Clear tape to keep water and dirt out of the channels in the polycarbonate material. I pre-drilled holes for the polycarbonate to be screwed into the lid frame and then attached the lid frame to the main frame with hinges at the back. But I didn't attach the polycarbonate just yet so it would still be easy to mount the opener mechanism without it blocking access to the pocket. Next, I test fit the opener into the pocket. The legs of the opener are squeezed together and are inserted into the holes in the bracket mounted inside the pocket. Then holding the upper arm against the underside of the lid cross support, or purlin, I disconnected the lower legs and raised the upper arm and lid together. Now I could access the upper opener mount and mark the slots for mounting it under the purlin. I drilled pilot holes for the screws, but I didn't mount the arm to the purlin just yet. With the opener on the workbench, I attach the wax-filled opener cylinder. This cylinder cartridge is what expands and contracts with the temperature changes inside the cold frames and opens and closes the lid. I put the cartridges in the refrigerator for about a half an hour or so before installing them so they were fully retracted, making installation easier. For mounting the opener in this configuration, the T-fitting is pointed away from the threaded ring. The hole in the shaft of the cylinder will mate with the hole in the T-fitting and a cotter pin is inserted to attach them together. This pin allows for easy removal of the cylinder when needed. With the cotter pin in place to keep the shaft properly aligned, the cylinder is then pushed forward to engage the threads with the threaded ring and then screwed in about halfway. The amount the cartridge is screwed into the ring shifts the range from fully closed to fully open. So this is how the adjustment is made to make the vent lid begin to open at a lower or a higher temperature. Start with the threads near the middle at first, and then once the cold frame is complete and operational, you can adjust it to your preference.
With the assembled opener mechanism mounted in the pocket and attached to the lid, I attached the polycarbonate panel to the lid frame. There are special screws with rubber washers built into them for installing these polycarbonate panels, but they weren't available locally. So instead, I used number eight one and a half inch screws and number eight washers to mount the panel to the pre-drilled holes in the lid. I was careful to not crank the screws all the way in, crushing the hollow panel. If there's a bit of a concave divot like this, the screw needs to be backed out until it disappears. The next step was to cover the top opening of the frame with the screening material. Removing the lid and detaching the opener legs from the pocket frame made for easy access. The screen was attached to the upper rails of the main frame and the upper rails of the pocket using staples on all edges. Then, using a utility knife, I cut away the screen covering the top of the pocket. The lid was put back onto the main frame and the opener mechanism reattached, and now the complete frame was ready to be mounted on the raised bed. I used three door hinges across the back. A four inch gate handle was initially added to the center of the front bottom rail, but I soon added handles to both sides near the lower front corners to make them easy to open from any direction. The older prefab of the two raised beds was not that well built and there were gaps between the top of the bed wall and the frame, so I added weather stripping to make a tight seal to keep the warmth in and the cold out. The new frame that I just built was nice and tight, so I didn't need to add weather stripping to that one. Gate hooks were added up front, so the frames could be locked down tightly to keep the wind and those persistently pesky raccoons from lifting the frames. I used chain stays to allow the cold frames to open without letting the weight of the cold frame sit on the back of the lid, since this would likely damage the openers. Notice that I put screws through two loops on each end of the chain to add redundancy in case of a chain breaking or a screw failing. I started with enough chain to lay mine back at a large angle, but closing them was a bit awkward. So I shortened the chains a bit to make for less of an angle. I just made sure they sit open at enough of an angle that the wind can't catch them and slam them down on the plants, or worse yet, my lovely partner. Finally, you can see I made 2x4 supports to prop the frames partially open. Our summer crops don't need the constant protection like young spring starts do, and they grow too tall to fully shut the frames, so the props come in handy to protect them from inclement weather. Just make sure to notch the ends of the 2x4 so it can't fall out if the wind comes up. Not only could the frame slam down, but the prop could fall in and break your plants. And there you have it. DIY cold frames with double walls for better insulation, insect screens, and automatic openers for ventilation. If you use this design to make your cold frames, you can ask questions, share photos, tips, variations, and information about your project in the comments section of the article page on UnchartedDIY.com. This is Steve, and thanks for watching Uncharted DIY. If you found this video helpful, Please like and subscribe. And now, go build your new cold frame. If you've enjoyed this how-to video, please make sure to like and subscribe. And also check out UnchartedDIY.com where you'll find further information and more detailed how-to projects.